included therein the bombings of Genoa, Naples, Turin, precision bombings of the Renault factory turning out Rommel's tanks. All these are part of the plan called Acrobat, of which the enemy still knew nothing. Nothing of the submarine trip to Africa by General Mark Clark with a message to be smuggled into France. Nothing of the arrival at Gibraltar of General Eisenhower, where he was joined by General Henri Giraud, who had received General Clark's smuggled message. The enemy knew nothing until the last possible moment when the first half of the convoy from Britain steamed past the fortress of Gibraltar. It was at night that the ships passed through the straits. The time had been carefully chosen, for here in narrow waters, attack seemed certain. Aboard ship and on the rock, everyone stood to, but the ships moved steadily on. It was as though, for the moment, the enemy's sword had fallen from his hand through indecision. This time, it was in Rome and in Berlin that the lights burned all night. For the first time since the war's beginning, somebody else was calling the tune. But before the enemy could collect its wits or its forces, our ships lay, as planned, off their appointed destination. Events planned four months earlier moved to a climax. Off Casablanca stood the convoy from America. To the troops aboard spoke their commander, General Patton. Soldiers and sailors, it is not known whether the French African army will contest our landing. But all resistance, by whomever offered, must be destroyed. However, when any of the French soldiers seek to surrender, you will accept it and treat them with the respect you, a brave opponent and future ally. Remember, the French are not Nazis or Japs. November the 8th, 1942, orders of the day. The words play ball transmitted by the task force commanders signifies that all forces are to take vigorous and offensive action against the enemy. 